This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hi, Hi! I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In this video, we are finally crossing out of our to-do list, one of our longest, want to make it as a doll projects, Totally Spies. Just like Winx last year, I feel like Totally Spies is being brought back, especially since season 7 is coming out next year, but I've been seeing content about them popping up recently, so I think it is time to kick things off now. We fully intend this to be a series of three dolls, but I'll let you know about the plans for Alex and Clover at the end. Now, let's make Samantha. While I make this first failed attempt at her spy costume, I will shortly explain to you our vision for these dolls. The cat suits won't be an exact copy of the original show design, because doing it three times would be simply boring. We are putting our own spin on it, tailored <laughs> to each girl's style, and somewhat inspired by more modern takes on fashion from the 2000s and some tech wear as well. Yes, this is Mori. <laughs> Ugly, ugly, and then I run out of thread, and I think I want it to be high-waisted, so we're gonna do it again. Third time, actually. Now that I have a clearer vision on what I want her pants to be, I will be more careful when sewing and I'll use tissue paper to make sure everything goes smoothly. After reassembling the legging pieces back into one and top stitching the seam allowance for detail, I am hemming the pieces using some fusible web tape. I tested it out on the Lycra and it retains the stretch. Somewhere in the meantime, I stitched the pieces at the front rise together and I'm hemming the waistband with the tape as well. Then, I sew the back rise partially because I'm not yet sure if I'll need a closure. But before I can know if I need one, I need to stitch the inseam. I check my alignment, which is good enough, and I put these together. Or, if you're very confident, you can start here and end here. Good luck. Upon fitting, it turned out that my fabric is stretchy enough to be simply sewn up top without a closure. To complement the leggings, I am making a shirt, similarly divided by the two tones of green. I attach the center to side pieces for both front and back, and put the fronts together. I'm also matching the top stitching I did on the leggings. From this point on, it's really basic. Shoulder seams. Then hem the neck hole and armholes. Then side seams. Then bottom hem and back seam. I fitted this on the doll and since I draped this pattern, it wasn't quite it yet. A bit of tailoring though and it was okay. I actually made the color transition match much better after the tailoring, so all's well that ends well. Now this is where I challenged myself to recreate a garment that was on my Pinterest board for a while. I call this a combat sleeve, but you can call it... New sexy neon green one shoulder off halter top Harajuku black reflective t-shirt woman hip hop streetwear t-shirt femme, if you prefer. I dripped it on Matilda, of course. Matilda had an upgrade? <laughs> uh, and a downgrade at the same time. It's a bit wobbly. But I have came up with this. Do you like it? I think it's okay. I cut it from yet another shade of green and I'm gonna trim out all of these edges. To make it less bulky, I am making this trim by folding it into three pieces. Using a glue stick instead of pins, I am positioning the trim onto the sleeve. Now, I will sew very close to the folded edge of the trim to secure it. The detail is really nice that way. Next, I will attach a thicker strap down the middle of the sleeve. This is purely for decoration and will include some D-rings for more fanciness. Next, I will gather the bottom edge so I can add a cuff to the sleeve and finish it off nicely. The sleeve can come together now at the inner seam. For the collar, I just used a piece of trim of the shirt I thrifted for this project. And I just attached a snap to it. With it in place, I can sew down a loop from the thick strap. The last detail is the front closure, and for it I'm just going to use a touch of metal buckle. It works really nice with the rest of the outfit and makes it less of a yoga set. I entertained the idea of using combat gloves for the girls here and moved on to add more detail. I added belt loops to the leggings and to them I added a belt, which is missing the heart for now. I also made a hip bag for her to complement the silhouette of the combat sleeve and the silver of the belt. 
I'm not showing how I made it here, but it will be on our website, among some other pieces from today's video, plus more. Speaking of our website, which was made with Squarespace... Alex and Barb, there is a mission. You need to let everyone know that there is a very special deal right now on Squarespace. Did you know that you can hide your site on Squarespace behind a password to prevent it from being publicly accessible? While your site is password protected, visitors need to enter the password to open the site. This can be helpful if only certain people should access it, like a spy agency website. You could perhaps hide a discount code in such a hidden website only for those spies who can crack the code, and Squarespace will automatically handle the discounting for you. All of this, of course, in your automatic digital products shop that you set up months ago. I can see your mission was successful, and thanks to you, our viewers can head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when they're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash enchantarium to save 10% off a first purchase of a website or domain. I think what gives the catsuit the distinct catsuit vibe is the epaulettes for the backpack and the buttons on the knees and elbows. So I made some 3D models for those and printed them out. After Alex painted them, I attached them to the suit first with super glue and later with a thread, as I made them kinda like buttons. The shoulder pieces already have magnets in them, so you know a backpack is in the works. The only thing missing for the spy outfit is the boots. I wanted Sam's outfit to be the most like the original, so as not to spark outrage that we are making the agents unrecognizable. So I went for high heeled shoes with the two tones, and the pattern I used for Sylvie was a perfect candidate for that, so I'm not gonna make a full blown tutorial on the same shoe again. The translucent soles I made for Sylvie made a comeback here, as they have a yellowish tint and fit the fantasy of invisibility technology for a spy. To make sure the bottom looks somewhat not ugly, I made silver insoles. Honestly, the silver leather is the MVP in this video. After putting everything together, there were some gaps, as the sole was made kind of by eye to a handmade last, so to hide that I glued on a strip of white leather, which I just had on hand. The shoes need a little touch up with green paint and they are ready to go. My first mission is to paint the compounders that Barb designed and printed on our Saturn 3D printer. We decided to make three compounders in this video for all the girls and reveal the next accessory in the next video instead of doing three of the same in each video. I sanded them and sprayed them with a grey primer. I found a few different color references, but since one of my favorite colors is light unsaturated pink, I chose it as a base. The inside is painted with purple grey paint with a few lighter spots, nothing fancy. Some color details like green scanner and dark pink heart, and I can add three protective layers of matte acrylic varnish. I joined the pieces with pins, but to be complete, they still miss something to display on the screen. I think a embarrassed Jerry picture will fit perfectly. And here is one of the compounders completed. Let's give her a face. These are the anime options we currently have. For one second we considered making this a semi-real series, but nah, the anime style will suit better with the aesthetic of the Totally Spice cartoon. We narrowed the options to F6 and COS and decided that F6, aka Kanata Sculpt, will be better for future Clover, so for some, COS it is. I'm removing the excess vinyl from the eyes, trying not to cut too much. After some gentle sanding, the face is ready for two coats of Mr. Super Clear and the first layer of watercolor pencils. I'm starting from the eyes, as there's a lot of work to do here. It's best to start from light colors first, so if you make a mistake, it's easy to remove with water or eraser. This time the sketch went super fast, I did all of it on one first layer, without any erasing. I guess I'm getting better and better with these anime faces and working with inset eyes in general. When you feel like the surface doesn't take any more pigment or you just want to Ctrl plus S the progress, spray the face with MSC or other sealant of your choice. On the second layer I'm adding darker brown on the eyes, orange on the brows, some color to the lips and blushing on the cheeks with chalk pastels. We decided that some freckles won't hurt as she has red hair and these features often come in a bundle, so I'm drawing tiny dots with a brown watercolor pencil. I want to keep her color palette very warm, a lot of orange, yellow and warm pink, so I added a bit of eyeshadow in these colors. Now I'm adding some visual interest with a white pencil. 
it makes the doll more detailed without drawing harsh features. I want her to look like she's very friendly, but also she knows exactly what she's doing, like she knows what your next move is, but keeps the knowledge to herself. When I'm satisfied with the colors and general shapes, I'm going over the lashes with black watercolor paint on top lid and brown on the lower lid. It will make them sharper and more visible, but by using brown I'm making it look more natural. I know there are no white freckles in real life, but I like how brown spots look with white dots, so I'm painting some with watered down acrylic paint. Then it's finally time for some sparkles. I'm giving her one layer of gold powder on the whole face and one layer of pink her legs powder on the cheeks. And with that, the face is ready. We have a lot of original Smart Doll eyes that we bought in the Chaos Outlet section and we want to use them, so I picked green ones and placed them into her head. As for the hair, we have this long orange hair Barb bought on AliExpress when we bought our first Smart Doll Genie, and it's a perfect color and length for Slam. Did you guys think that's it? Nope! We have the other cover outfit, but as a kid the normal outfits were as cool for me as the catsuit. So let's sew some cute casual clothes. I'm starting with my new sewing pattern available on enchantarium.com, which is the overalls. It has a lot of pieces and everything is detailed in the written instructions that come with the pattern. I first prepare the button plackets and sew them to the hip strip, trimming the excess seam allowance. I then join the hip strip and the front piece below the placket and snip the seam allowance below the placket so that I can press the seam allowance toward the center front and top stitch it. I hem the part with the button placket. I add inseam pockets to the front, a detailed fuel by the real world injustice of girls not having enough or big enough pockets. I mark and sew the darts on the back pieces and prepare the back pockets. I find it easiest if I cut off the seam allowance from the paper pattern and use it as a guide when pressing the edges. I hem the top and on a whim I decided to add a decorative stitch. I then press the remaining edges and baste them in place. I can now add the pockets to the back pieces. To make sure they're symmetrical, I trace them with my fingernail to the other piece. After adding the remaining pieces of the inseam pockets to the backs, I can join them at the crotch, making sure I leave a gap for the stand. I press the upper part of the seam open, and you may notice I'm finishing most of the edges with an overlocking stitch as the denim legs to fray. Denim stuff usually has a lot of top stitching, so I'm top stitching the seam like so. This also secures the stand hole. The fronts can now also be joined at the rise and top stitch. Let's talk about the upper part. I'm preparing the front pocket, the same as the back pockets, and I attach it to one of the front trapezoids. I then attach it to the front piece of the pants, and there is some overhanging seam allowance, which is good, it's supposed to happen. I layer the other trapezoid with one edge pressed up already, and join it with the first one. I trim the seam allowance, flip it, and top stitch all around. Next up, side seams. At the top there will be some seam allowance sticking out again, but I just match the seam from the bottom and at the pocket, and it should be the right amount sticking out. I sew to the pocket, pivot with my needle down, sew around the pocket, pivot with my needle down again, and then sew the rest of the leg. I top stitched this seam both above and below the pocket, but I recommend that above the pocket you press the seam open before you top stitch. And you may need to snip, snip, <laughs> snip, 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 snip. <laughs> the snip is back. <laughs> and you may need to snip the seam allowance above the pocket. That way the back trapezoid will attach just like the front one. Anyway, the seam allowance is pressed towards the front of the garment. Now before we can sew the back trapezoids, we need to prepare straps. These are folded in half, then the halves in half again, and along the first fold, then top stitch close to both edges. The first back trapezoid goes on the overalls, then the straps are sandwiched between the two trapezoids. 
I decided to make mine regulated, but it adds a lot of bulk, so you can just simply put the whole strap here and make it one length at the end when you add the snaps. The back trapezoids are now joined. Again, the one that will be on the inside has the bottom edge pressed up at this stage. We flip it and top stitch it and add the other strap. <laughs> Honestly, look up a tutorial in human scale to understand this better, because this was hard to do, let alone film cohesively in this scale. I decided to add cuffs to the pattern and at this point I'm going to bleach mine. I cut them out and set them in a plastic tray. I used a 50% bleach solution for about 15 minutes. I joined the front and back cuffs at the outer edge and hemmed them with fusible tape. Now we need to attach them to the leg and this is a bit unusual, it's not the right sides together, but with the pants right sides up, the cuff is right sides up and goes under the leg part. Then it is flipped up to cover the raw edge we just sewn. And you need to keep it up like this while sewing the inseam. Ask me how I know. So yeah, now the inseam. Pin where the crotch seams meet and check it's well aligned. Then sew from one cuff to the other. See those cuffs? They are wrong. Keep them flipped up. I snip the curve a little bit near the crotch as it helps with the fit sometimes and I need to fix the cuffs but after that we can do some more bleaching. I decided to do a zebra stripe pattern going up from the cuffs. The problem with this is that I don't see what I'm doing. I can see it starts kind of softening up here but other than that I just don't know where I've painted so... What to do? What do I do? Uh... After this little panic moment, I managed to fill in my chalk line just fine and after washing and drying and ironing, I can mount the snaps. I actually recommend not cutting the holes out, just making a hole with a thumbtack or an awl because some of my buttons fell out and I had to fix the holes. Then this goes in here and this goes on top and then we have this dimple thing. It goes inside the button thing. And then smash! I am really happy with how these turned out. I spent a long time drafting this pattern, so I hope you guys will love it too. To complement the overalls, I decided on a simple gathered top. I wrote down some measurements, but they were just a guess, and I redid the shirt later with a little bit bigger measurements. It's basically a rectangle with two lengths of elastic running parallel to the edges. The rectangle needs to be about two to three times as long as the circumference of the doll. And you make it into a tube. And that's it. I did the sleeves the same way. And of course we need shoes for this outfit too, so I designed a new sole for a sandal. I printed it on the Mars and because I set it up the way I did, there is some sanding that we need to do. I mocked up the straps with some painter's tape and marked where they hit the sole. I transferred the pattern to paper and later to some inner facing which I glued on the same silver leather we've seen already. I cut the pieces with some excess and folded it over to the wrong side with Yoohoo glue. Yoohoo! I used a hammer this time to relieve some frustration and make everything flatter. I also put the pieces under some weight for a while. It's math books, so it's heavy. <laughs> Since I have marks on the bottom of the sole where the pieces start and end, and I have marks on the pieces where they should hit the side of the sole, assembling the shoes is very easy. Just match up the two lines. I'm using a resin cast of the foot. <laughs> foot. <laughs> It's like it has an umlaut in there. <laughs> fit. <laughs> I'm using a resin cast as a last to make sure the fit is okay. I thinned the straps on the bottom of the sole and glued the upper to the threaded printed part. To finish the edge off, I'm adding this very thin wire with black insulation and I'm just stacking it with super glue. On the doll, I measured the strap length I would need and added a buckle. And I am done! Dun 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 I love how these shoes turned out, but I think they look even better with the soles in silver.
We want our version of Sam to be nerdy but girly, so I'm piercing her ears and giving her these silver leaves as earrings. The official chart says her costume is green because she's natural, and I think leaves will suit her. But drink holes and smart dolls is so much fun that I couldn't stop myself from giving her two more small earrings. She probably went to a piercing studio as a support with Alex or Clover and went out with an extra earring too. <laughs> I think this outfit needs a little bit more accessorizing, and maybe a silver necklace will do the job. I chose a star to make her look a little bit younger and more playful. The aesthetic of the show has a lot of elements like stylized flowers and hearts, so I thought a star would be a similar decoration. Let's go back to the spy outfit for a moment. All the spies have gloves with their costumes and we have this pack of black combat gloves. I don't even know when and why Barb bought them, but they will make good spy gloves. We wanted to paint them all silver or grey, so she can share them with Alex and Clover, but they just don't look good for our spy style. I picked two and decided to paint them green to match the outfit. For some reason the style of how I painted the gloves reminds me of Lioness from ATOM cartoon, another show that I was obsessed with in the mid-2000s. It's probably the colors and the general machine-like aesthetic of that show. One thing Sam still needs is a heart on the bell, and I'm simply painting it with acrylics. Every time Barb looked at her, she said she's not sure about the eyes, so I made another pair from glass cabochons. They are way smaller and much brighter, which looks better with this sculpt. The original eyes go to the box again, waiting for better times. This is how she turned out. I am so excited that we finally started this series, and I am really happy with how the spy outfit turned out. I think I managed to preserve the essence of the original catsuit, but at the same time modernize it and put my own spin on it. And the casual outfit was such a fun project to do as well, even though I basically did two dolls worth of clothes for one video. It was worth it. I'm especially proud of the silver sandals, I think those are my best shoes to date. As for the future plans, the next videos from this series will come out after Halloween, due to some scheduling commitments we agreed to prior, but I hope you guys can wait a bit and will be as excited as we are. Once again, please visit Enchantarium.com for the new smart doll patterns. Some are free and some will be available to purchase, which will directly support us. And make sure to try to solve the puzzle to get the discount code. Do you even remember the Totally Spice cartoon? Who's your favorite character? Mine was always Sam. She's smart and beautiful, and I wanted to be like her. <laughs> but also because I love everything green. There was no blue agent in the original three at least, but my favorite is Alex, and I'm only saying this because I have a legal obligation because my sister's name is Alex, thank you. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> but I did like Alex the most, because she was quirky. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day, and we'll see you next time. Bye!